Corel Painter 2019 is here, and today we're going to be talking about what's new. That's coming up next. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and it is my mission to help artists like you enjoy Corel Painter and learn some new skills along the way. So let's go ahead and dive into what's new in Corel Painter 2019. Quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Corel, but I do earn revenue from the affiliate links in the video description. The 2019 version of Painter focuses on performance and usability. It's light on new features compared to the last few versions. A good chunk of highly requested bugs have been addressed and the performance of Painter is faster than previous versions. It also looks a lot more modern and offers some great dark UI themes. I think a lot of current Painter users will be pleased with what's been done to fine tune Painter. Painter is working better than ever and you'll definitely notice a difference. Though I initially felt a little disappointed that there wasn't any new brush tech to play with, the major boost in performance is enough to make me a happy painter. All right, so on to what's new. When you launch Corel Painter 2019 for the first time, you're gonna be greeted by the welcome screen. Now, I don't need to say too much about the welcome screen. Basically, there's some tabs over here on the left that you can navigate through. You can create a new document. You can set up Corel Painter. You can see what's new in Corel Painter and watch videos. You can watch tutorials. You can check out a gallery featuring artwork from artists like this guy here, Aaron Rutten. If you don't want this to show, you can click on the gear and you can uncheck show at startup and then close it. So that's the welcome screen. Not a new feature, but something that was updated. But one thing you'll definitely notice is the modernized UI. UI stands for user interface. All of the icons have been updated. They now look a lot more modern and they're much easier to see. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my brush to a thick paint brush here. And you might notice that up here in the top in the properties bar, there is this squarish icon and there's this roundish icon. Any icon that's square is going to control the media of the brush and the media is the paint or what comes out of the brush. So for example, this one will show or hide the thick paint media panel. Icons that are round like this can control the shaping of the brush. So it controls the shape of the bristles or the brush itself. So square icons control media, round icons control brush shaping. And you'll notice that a lot of these icons have changed from previous versions. That may take a little getting used to. Another thing that really stands out is that the user interface is this much darker theme. All of the icons are darker, the background's darker, the palettes are darker, and so on. Now this is just one theme. There are lots of other themes to choose from. We can go to Edit, Preferences, and then Interface. And up here in the top under Color Theme, we have Dark Gray, Medium Gray, Light Gray, Frost, and Sepia. Frost and Sepia were found in previous versions of Corel Painter. Right now I'm using the dark gray. Now if we change the color theme, we're gonna to need to restart Corel Painter. So you can feel free to experiment with these different modes and see which one works best for you. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of all three of the gray themes so you can get a feel for how they're going to look. I really like this dark gray theme, so I'm gonna be sticking with that. The next new feature is the enhanced sliders. And if we click on the slider for the brush size here, we now get this updated slider. It has a little grabber on it and we can grab the grabber and we can resize the brush. We can also just tap anywhere on this to go ahead and size it. And another new feature, we can hold down control and drag and you get the slow or precision mode. So if I wanted to move this down just a very, very small amount, I can do that. It's very helpful for when you get over here into the very thin brushes that you would use for inking. You may want specifically a 1.6 or 1.3. It's much easier to do that with the precision mode. Now this will work on any slider. So we can choose a slider over here, the HSV slider, and we can hold control on that and we get precision mode with that as well. Very helpful if you wanna dial in a very specific value. Now, if you're using Mac, you would be holding down command while dragging the slider to get the precision mode. Another great improvement to Corel Painter is the highlighting of what's selected here. There's now a very obvious colored highlight for the selected tool and for the selected brush properties. So for example, if I turn on straight line strokes, then it highlights straight line strokes. If I select the paint bucket tool, then it highlights the paint bucket tool. This makes it very easy to see what's selected. Next are a couple of improvements to the color picker. There's now a little circle here, and that way you can see what color is underneath and it just looks a lot nicer. So it's much easier to see the color that you're getting in this version of Corel Painter. What's also nice is that the background on the entire color picker here is a neutral gray. And that's important for choosing color because now you can see the color without it being influenced by a value that's too light or too dark surrounding it. If we look in the color set libraries, you can also see that there's a 50% neutral gray added to the background between the swatches here. 
Again, this makes it much easier to choose color because you're seeing the color more accurately without having too bright or too dark of a color surrounding it. So those are relatively small tweaks, but I feel like they're very helpful. But let's jump into something that is really going to impact your workflow, and that is the improvements to the performance. Corel Painter 2019 is faster with large brushes, documents with many layers, and large documents. There's also faster application performance overall. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and go to open templates and let's create a new canvas here. Let's try 20 by 24 at 200. Now that's a pretty decent canvas size. If we go to canvas resize, then you can see it's 4,000 by 4,800 pixels. These templates here are a new feature as well. These are standard print sizes. So let's start by pushing the performance to its limits. I'm gonna choose a brush that's in acrylics and gouache called Captured Bristle 2. Let's go ahead and make this its maximum size, 750 pixels. I'll go ahead and set the opacity on this brush up to 100. Let's do a test stroke here and let's see what we get. Very laggy, but again, this is a very large brush on a very large canvas, and my computer can't handle this much processing going on in one brush stroke. So again, that's kind of an extreme example of how you would use a brush. If I were using this brush much smaller and using it for normal painting, it's very quick and very responsive. Let's go ahead and compare performance to Corel Painter 2018 now. So we have the same brush, the same canvas size. Let's do a test stroke and we can see. Now it does feel a little bit slower than Corel Painter 2019. But what's important here is if you're maxing out your processor in Corel Painter 2018 or Corel Painter 2019, it's gonna feel slow no matter what. So where you're gonna notice that performance boost more is in normal everyday workflow. You're probably not gonna use a 750 pixel brush like this. You'll be using brushes that are a bit smaller, and in that case, those brushes will work a little bit quicker in Corel Painter 2019. Here's that same 570 pixel brush in Corel Painter 2019, and you can see that it responds a lot quicker here in Corel Painter 2019 than it does in earlier versions. So again, it's gonna depend on the size of the brush, the size of your canvas, the kind of brush technology that you're using, and your computer hardware. If you're using a slower, older computer, you're probably not gonna notice much of a performance boost. If you're using a more modern computer with better specs, then you're gonna be able to better utilize some of those performance optimizations. One thing that you can do is go to Edit, Preferences, Performance, and then just double check your performance settings here. You wanna be using around 60 to 80% of your memory. And if your computer has multiple cores, you could set your multi-core usage up to use more cores. If you have a scratch drive, you can also select that. That can be helpful. And you can set your undo levels a little bit lower as well. That will optimize your performance a bit you may need to restart Painter for these performance settings to take effect, and that should help you take better advantage of some of these performance enhancements. And then finally, just to put things into context, I have a 750 pixel brush here in Photoshop on a canvas that is 4000 by 4800 pixels, and if I do a test stroke here, you can see that even in Photoshop, I'm getting quite a bit of lag. So lag isn't necessarily being caused by the software, it's being caused by the limitations of the hardware on your computer. Let's move on to another category of new features, and that is enhanced document manipulation. Now I'm using a Cintiq 27 QHD Touch, which supports both pen input and touch input, and multi-touch has been greatly improved here in Corel Painter 2019. And by that, I mean it actually works now. So let's go ahead and give it a try here. I'm gonna to touch the screen with two fingers, and I'm gonna move it side to side, and I can pan the view of my page. I can move it up, down, left, right, and diagonally. But if I pinch my fingers together, I can zoom out, or if I spread them apart, I can zoom in. So I can pan and zoom, and I can get right to the exact spot that I wanna work on here, and then I can draw in my detail, like so. And I can zoom back out very easily. Move on over to, let's say, this tooth here, zoom in real close to this. And I can draw at a very nice, comfortable angle here very easily. And then it's very easy to zoom back out again and go back to that eye or wherever I want and keep working. Multi-touch is very fluid and very smooth and very responsive. Now you can double tap with two fingers to reset your rotation and zoom back to fit the canvas. And then I can zoom in again. Now if you do find that touch ever does get stuck and it's not responding, then you can do that double tap and that will usually get it working again. But it's working very nicely. Very nice to be able to use touch now with Corel Painter. Now we have some options for touch. If we go to File, Preferences, and then Tablet, then down here under Multi-Touch Options, we can choose from Wacom and Windows Touch Devices, which is what's recommended, or we can just choose Wacom Device or just Windows Touch Device. 
So if you're using a Surface Pro or something that's not using Wacom technology, you'll probably want to use Windows Touch device. But I would say go ahead and just leave it at this setting here, which is Wacom and Windows Touch devices, because that's been working best for me. Now, if you don't have a tablet that supports touch, don't worry, you're not going to be left out here because we have some magic with the regular old magnifier tool. We can now do scrubby zoom. So if I drag to the right, I'll zoom in. If I drag to the left, I'm going to zoom out. I could also drag up to zoom in or down to zoom out. You don't want to go diagonally. That kind of messes things up. So either up, down, left or right. But now you can zoom into that exact perfect zoom level rather than having levels that kind of jump like when you zoom the old fashioned way. It was very hard to get the canvas exactly the size I want it on the screen in previous versions of Painter, but now I can do that very, very easily. I can get it to fit perfectly or resize it to a very specific point. Now you may notice if you look up here in the top in properties, there's zoom mode, drag to zoom, or select zoom area. If you want the magnifier to work like it did in previous versions, just change it to select zoom area. And now when you tap with it, it zooms in. You can hold alt to zoom out, but you can also drag a box and you can draw a box where you want to zoom in. Or you can set it back to drag to zoom, and then when you drag, you don't drag a box, you do the scrubby zoom. However, you can also hold shift, and when you hold shift, it's going to toggle between these two modes. So now if I'm holding shift while it's set to drag to zoom, it's no longer going to scrub, I can draw a box. If I let go of shift, then it's scrubbing again. It would be the inverse of that if I set it to select zoom area, I'm drawing a box, or if I hold shift, it toggles it, and then I'm scrubby zooming in and out. Another new feature that I'm very excited about is the pinned temporal color wheel. Now we have this default color wheel here, which is kind of confined to this palette, but if we were to hit Control Alt 2 or Command Option 2 if you're on Mac, that pops open the temporal color wheel. We can drag that over and it stays pinned, meaning that you can pick a color and you can paint with it, but that palette's not going to disappear now. So I can continue picking colors and painting. And what's nice about this is this is here on the screen. I can drag the edges. I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. I can even bring it near my artwork here. And so let's say if I'm in this dark area on the face, if I want to pick a color that's maybe noticeably lighter, it's easier to see the difference in hue, saturation, and value when you have the two colors next to each other there. So I could sample this color from the face, and then I can just make a slight change to that. You can also access the pinned temporal color wheel by going to Window. And if you look under layout and you choose simple, that switches everything to the simple layout. And here's the pinned color wheel that we can have here in our simple minimalist layout, which doesn't take up a whole lot of space on the screen. This is a great layout if you're using a tablet that has a smaller screen. Now, while there isn't a whole lot of new brush technology here in Corel Painter 2019, there are some new brushes to play with. There are 36 new brushes to be specific. I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm not going to demonstrate all the brushes. But I will go to the brush selector here and I will show you that there is a new category down here at the bottom that is called stamps. And this has some brand new brushes that can create different stamps. As you can see here, you can have some dents if you wanted to make kind of a dented background. These are really intended to be used more with a mouse to just do a single click. So for example, with that dent, I could select a background color and then just click with my mouse to make a few little dents there. And then I can get control over exactly where they appear. I wanted to put some lighter colors in the background, I could do that. And this just adds a subtle bit of texture to things. And again, I'm just clicking with my mouse. You have control over the merge mode as well. So if I wanted this to blend lighter with the background, I can set it to screen. And now when I build up those strokes, they get lighter and lighter each time. It's a good way to add more texture. Just as well, I could do the opposite and set it to multiply. And now it's going to get darker and darker as it builds up on itself. And again, I'm just clicking with the mouse. If I select a red color, you can see I also have control over the opacity. If I press down lightly, then I get a thinner stamp. If I press down hard, then I get a very thick opaque stamp. But there's lots of new brushes to check out. Some of the best ones are here in the Sargent category. Blocky background is pretty cool, for example. It's a very nice oily brush that you can use to quickly kind of block in a background. So definitely take some time to experiment with those and check them out. If we look under Pattern Pens, there is Pattern Pen Transparent and transparent no sizing. These are new pattern pen brushes that support transparency. So let's try transparent no sizing. We'll take a look at the pattern that we have here. There's five new patterns that were added as well. Let's try fire. Now we can paint in this really cool fire pattern here. 
My cat really does not look too happy about this. So if you like to draw with these pattern pens, definitely check out the two new pattern pen brushes and the new patterns. The next new feature I want to tell you about is the Enhanced Brush Ghost, which is this little circle that shows you the diameter of your brush if you were to use maximum pen pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to a different brush here. I'm going to go back to my scratchboard tool and I'm going to select black. I'm going to make my brush bigger. We can see my brush ghost showing the maximum size of my brush. And if I paint a stroke, you can see it accurately represents that diameter if I use maximum pressure. However, you may have noticed that in this version of Curl Painter, that brush ghost disappeared as soon as I started drawing the stroke. So it appears when I pick up my pen, but if I press down, then it goes away. And all you see is this very tiny cursor, which you probably can't see here. But if I zoom in really closely on it here, you can kind of see it wiggling around. It's this tiny, tiny little crosshair. Now the benefit to this is when that little circle goes away when you're drawing, then there's a lot less lag and it's easier to see very precisely what you're drawing. However, the disadvantage is that you can't see that icon as well. And for me, for someone who does a lot of tutorials, having something that people can easily see is a benefit for me. So I would probably just leave that enabled for that reason. But otherwise, if I was just gonna do a lot of sketching like this, it's kind of nice not to have that icon showing at all times. Now you have full control over that icon and what gets displayed by going to edit preferences. And then there's a new brush cursor category. And then here's where we have the option to show the icon when painting. This is referring to that crosshair that's showing. If you want it to go back to how it worked in previous modes, then you just uncheck that. And then you'll see that brush ghost circle while you're painting the entire time, as you can see here. If I do want the brush ghost to disappear and I wanna show an icon, then I'll choose show icon. Then I have some options for the icon. I can choose the default crosshair, you can choose a brush icon, a cross icon, lots of different options here. One that I like is the triangle, and you can of course set the angle as well, and the color. Here's the triangle, and I like this because it kind of looks like a pencil tip. So now you have lots of options for your brush ghost. So there you go, that was a look at what's new in Corolla Painter 2019. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button, and go on over to patreon.com slash Aaron Rutten, and join me on my mission to create more Corolla Painter tutorials like this. And if you're interested in learning more about Corel Painter, check out some of my courses available at aaronrutten.com. I'll put a link down in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.